All right, Robbie, I'm, uh, maybe jumping to conclusions here, but is the main emotion relief after that one? Oh, absolutely, on yeah, absolutely. It was, uh, it was some battle, but we knew it was going to be, so probably no surprise to us in that, and uh, they're a very good side, very, very good side. So we're delighted to come out that far side of it, yeah. Can you talk us through what you were thinking maybe three quarters of the way through the match when those shots just weren't dropping for you? I think 16 wides in total. Yeah, someone texted there saying 16 wides was a huge amount, but... Uh, Again, the only thing we weren't we were creating the opportunities, we just weren't taking it, so we weren't panicking too much. I think once we got it back to about eight six, we felt we'd a bit of the momentum, so we were hopefully just looking to see it out then, and we did at the end. Yeah. Does that overall give you like a positive feeling when you're going to judge the performance that with forwards like Paul Mannion there, if you're creating the opportunities, that that's the most important part. Those sixteen will surely diminish in the final. You'd hope so. We've been probably like that for the last couple of games. We haven't our execution hasn't been good enough. So look, we've been, I keep saying this all year. We're after sixty minutes um, consistency, and again, we haven't got it today. So we'll go and see can we get it for the Leinster final. What was the key to, to finding that spark in the end? I think we pushed up on the kickouts. Um, we took a bit of a gamble and just squeezed, and we left ourselves open a little bit at the back. But at that stage, we probably had to, and uh, luckily, luckily, it worked out. How big a factor was the Mullinyakta 2018 factor coming in here today? As not as heavy favourites, Port Arlington a hugely respected team, but as, as slight favourites. Yeah, I think. Look again, Mullinyakta keeps coming up, but like I think six or seven of the Longford team playing that day, like and yeah. people seem to forget that. But and half of that squad isn't there anymore for us. There's a big turnover, so it's it's mentioned a little bit, but not a huge amount. But. I just thought 3-1 to one for Port Arlington was, was way overpriced or a proper side. So we knew it was going to be tight, yeah. It's amazing as well, just the, the, the kick passing on show from Port Arlington today, an excellent footballing team. And then some of the, the, the other styles of football you might have played in Dublin so far this year. you got a taste of everything in this campaign. Yeah, we have. We have. It's been up and down and defensive and attacking guys and, and, and attacking opposition. But they're, they're a gorgeous football team to watch. I'd, I'd pay in to watch them the way they kick the ball and they move it so quickly. So, uh, yeah, and they were lucky not to come out on the other side of it. But um, they'll be back for sure, yeah goal was some finish yeah I didn't I didn't even think it was on to be honest with you and obviously he did the same in the Dublin final and we're joking saying he'll have to be on the bench again for the next day but he's a phenomenal player with all our medals in his back pocket so uh, he's he's some experience to bring in there yeah what are the A versus B games like in training? Yeah, they're good. They're good because we've brought some of the minors up as well. So we've probably 35, 36 in the squad at the minute. So that the, the internal games on Saturday mornings are, are quite heavy and intense, which is great. We need that, yeah. 35 minutes until Paul Mannion got on the score sheet today. I'm sure you didn't doubt him for one second. I'm not sure. What did he finish up at three or four in the end? But Yeah, I think three or four in the end. But that's Paul, isn't it? He'll, he'll, he'll find a space in his yard. His, his, you know, and he's working so hard. He's a threat every time he gets it from an opposition point of view. So we're delighted to have him. <laughs> probably adds a, a little few extra inches to his game as well once he's playing here in, in Croke Park a ground he knows so well and also the wider environment as well he's so good from range yeah he is and he's probably proved that the last day in Park Talton as well he uh, obviously knows his place very well and a few of the other guys as well would have played here as well so it wasn't too uh, too much of a, a leap for them to come in here and, and, and suddenly play out there yeah obviously the, the club in general there's not too much of a, a hurling football crossover tough result for the club last week but how big was it just to get this win, having talked, having spoken to people in the club over the last week to try and get the, the good times back and hopefully a bit more silverware for the club this week? Yeah, I hope so. The hurlers, Kieran and the lads and Dini have done a massive job with the hurlers and there's been a super buzz around the club for the last week while and it was hugely disappointing for them last weekend. But all credit to Cluck, they're obviously a, a serious hurling team. The conditions were atrocious compared to maybe we were lucky to get out there. So, uh, But we got loads of good wishes from Kieran and all the, a lot of the hurlers coming in today. So it's, uh, it's a real club effort. Not a bad idea to play the game here. The lights are just going off uh, around us as people can see. But to, to, to get people into this into this ground and even some of the, the lads in the first game who never would have played here before as well, it's an unbelievable occasion and, and, and it's great for a lot of people out there today. It is. We saw a couple of the management came in yesterday just for a little look around the place just to see where we'd be going and which dressing room because we hadn't been in it. And uh, it's an amazing, an amazing environment. It can be it can swallow you up if you're, if you're not able for it. And, and luckily our guys were, yeah. Uh, literally the lights going out right now uh, I, you obviously wouldn't have caught much of Nace in the first game you were preparing yourselves went to extra time and they managed to, to grind it out themselves like yourselves favourites and had to work hard uh, I guess what today has proved is that the favourites tag kind of means nothing a little bit especially in, in club GA so even if you lads are favourites going into that final I'm sure you won't take Nace too lightly no absolutely not I've seen a bit of them actually this year and right. just through, through different jigs and reels and uh, a very good side Yeah, I think that Dublin thing like we're not Dublin we're, we're Gilman Cod you know but people obviously just think we're Dublin coming out but we're not we're croaked so it's uh, we don't get that same kind of expectations that we have to win we're just come out and trying each game as it is and uh, look we're there to the next step so bring it on how will you enjoy Christmas now with this on the back of your mind? Good problem to have. It's a good problem. Yeah, Shane Horn's getting married actually during the middle of it, right. so we'll have to we'll have to balance that now a little bit. But um, yeah, with COVID and everything else, it's going to be tricky. So we just have to have a look at it now tonight and see how we how we plan it out for the next three weeks. All right, well, enjoy Christmas, Robbie. Thanks a million for your time and congratulations. Cheers, on. Thanks very much.